What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. Back again, part two of our show truck conversion of the new RC four-wheel drive extra cab. Uh, it's TF2, ready to run truck. Nicely painted body. Um, part one, it was a stressful video. I, I tried to edit out my stress, but <laughs> I'm sure it come across. I was just having a rough day. Um, it was a little frustrated trying to do the opposite of what I normally do with the TF2s, but we got it figured out. And uh, I'm I'm digging it now. I'm, I'm getting more into it. The way this thing sits on these wheels and tires, it just brings back all kinds of memories. And it apparently does for a lot of you guys too. Uh, Facebook post with these with the pictures of this have been getting hundreds of comments. People posting pictures of the trucks they had back in the day. Lots of uh, here's my Hilux I bought new in '83 and it was lifted with big tires and wheels. You know that was just the style, man. So it's been cool getting to see a lot of people's real trucks and uh, other RC trucks as well. So, I am starting this video, I don't have everything I need. We're gonna tackle the shocks. So I, immediately after the other video, I ordered two more white 90 millimeter shocks and four more 80 millimeter shocks. And I think that's the right size we're gonna need. I also ordered the dual front shock bracket. There's, I don't know, wow, that's $80 shipped just about everywhere from RC 4 Drive, Amazon, eBay, doesn't matter. I'm guessing that has to be all hand welded to be able to mount two shocks like that. So I don't know. That will be here Saturday. But in the meantime, I'm going to start with the body stuff that we didn't get to in the last one. We're going to go ahead and mount this roll bar up, get some lights on it, and get this rear bumper installed. You see, I've also been sorting through my scale hardware. I just ordered some more of that. I use locked up RC M3 scale bolts. I'm going to have to get a bigger container and start organizing it this thing has gotten deteriorated over the years like just everything's kind of mixed and I've, some of these lift up and i didn't notice and i got stuff switched back and forth but i went through and pulled out almost all of my stainless steel oh, that's just used okay so i've got all the stainless steel stuff over here by size i think that's the the play for this truck i'm going to start swapping over everything on the chassis to scale hardware uh, pending i have enough I don't have a whole lot of this size. I think those are the eight millimeters, which is the most common. And uh, yeah, so I got some more of that stuff on the way. But also with the shocks that I ordered from RC4 Drive, I, I, these builds, it's money, money, money. I spent $138 on shocks and yellow shock boots. We're gonna keep the yellow theme since we have to go with the white shocks. Um, I wasn't gonna pay extra for the Old Man Emu shocks, which are the only ones they have available right now in yellow. And then yellow shock boots on top of that would look a little funny. So I figure white and the yellow will be our accent color. Like we've got the red boot in there. So a lot of money there. 74 something plus shipping for the front shock hoops. And uh, yeah, so I hope I got the right size shocks. But I'm going to move some of this stuff out the way. We'll start on this roll bar. Start looking at these KC highlights. And uh, I've got some hardware. These things are multi-piece. Lots of little things going on with them. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward though. Um, you probably, if you're going to get out and crawl again, this is going to be a show truck. You might want to put some glue on some of this stuff. The lens kind of snaps in. It has KC, so I oriented it correctly, even though I'm not going to be able to see it. Then our outer trim ring goes on. I'm guessing those little flaps go at the bottom. I don't know. That holds that all together. Then you snap your cover on. And then you find the smallest screws in existence. Not sure what these stainless screws are that I have in here. And we're going to put in the LED retaining part just so it closes the back of the bulb up or the housing up. I am not running LEDs. I'm not a fan of wiring and running light wiring down this roll bar. I would never ha be happy with how it came out because I, in real life, you would run the wiring inside the tube. And uh, I don't think there's a way to really do that. There's no holes in it. I mean, it is hollow, but you'd have to drill a tiny little hole in here and try to try to route all that stuff through. And it uh, doesn't sound like a good time to me. So that's pretty simple. I'm going to put it in the middle hole. We do have optional holes up here. I don't know what for. The different lights, perhaps. And uh, yeah, we're just going to do it like this. A few dummy lights while we keep the smiley faces on and pretend it's 1987. All right, got those on. Um, I'm gonna do something here before we mount this up. I mentioned it in the last couple videos, how 
big a pain in the butt these inner fenders are. They're just super wide, especially the rear ones. And I'm gonna trim them up a little bit just to try and make it a little bit easier process to get this on and off. Um, you can kind of see the fronts aren't as bad. They need a little bit off that front corner. Um, you can see these rear ones. There's a lot up here that needs to come back. I'm gonna try to leave all of this at the top, just these lower edges and uh, try to shave that down a little bit. Make this a little easier because I've had this off and on quite a bit and uh, it's getting a little annoying. All right, I think I did the trick. I just took a little bit off here and there, not anything major. Um, it's still a little snug in the back, but it's easier now. You can just kind of lift these up and as you put the body on and it goes right in. Um, left, that's still the stock, but it kind of where they flared out for the uh, curve of the body. Just trimmed a little bit of that off here and at the back. The front's a little bit at the back and just a tiny little bit at the front and it's working a lot better. So let's look at mounting this roll bar now. All right, I got it pretty well where I like it. Got this extra fine tip, silver Sharpie. It's gonna be, oh, I thought I had it where I wanted it. Oh, no, I bumped it. It's not perfectly square, so we're gonna use the old eagle eye a little bit. Get things where we want it. Hopefully this will reach down through, barely. Not quite. Oh, let's see if we can get any of these. I got one. Just don't have anything quite pointy enough for this. Need one of those ultra fine tip Sharpies, I think. All right, back to the drawing board. This isn't dangerous at all. I've got a very fine tip paintbrush. Um, little dab of some red model car paint. My unsteady hand. And <laughs> yeah, at least we've got one. Oh, I just got it all over the bar. All right, well, let's get these marked and we'll get some thinner and wipe that off real quick. I do not have a steady enough hand for that today. All right, no problem. Got a little uh, rubbing alcohol. Took that right off before it dried. I'll tell you one thing, that smell of that model car paint takes me back. Building model cars as a kid. <laughs> it's like a trigger smell. So we'll grab a drill bit. And we'll, uh, yeah, and clean up some of this mess. All right, so these have, look like 2.5 mil hardware. So I'm going to use an 8 30 seconds. I think, I think it's 8. Might be 3. I can't tell. Eight. <laughs> I'm gonna drill that out with that. And it's got nuts and everything to put on the inside. This is the tricky part. How to not mess up a beautifully painted RTR body. Step three of that. Be glad you didn't drill through any of your light wiring. <laughs> uh, let's see, where is my tool? I only have three bolts. What have I done? All right, well, now we're gonna spend 30 minutes looking for that screw I just had a minute ago. If you see it in the video, comment below. There it is. All right, <laughs> got those all in. Of course, I don't have a nut driver the size of these uh, nuts that are going on here, so you gotta do them all by hand. It's a little tricky, but the uh, holes we drilled were almost, you could almost thread the screw in but you, you don't want to trust that one roll over on the trail and that flies off and snaps and pulls out your bed or something. At least this way, you got a little bit more support underneath it. All right, you can see underneath, just got the four screws there. All done, ready to go. Now, I forgot this bumper. All right, so looks like we need another part. The uh, latest RTRs don't come with the bumper mounts that like the old Hilux bodies did because the bumpers don't attach to them. Uh, usually it's a plastic piece that slides in the end of the rails here, screws in, and uh, yeah, gives you these two mounting holes for things like this to slide into. So this is very adjustable in height. We'll have to get it on there and see where we need it. I have this is a number two, which is a different drop level of the uh, Trailfinder 2 bumper mount. This is an aluminum one. I bought a couple of these a while back when I was doing, did that work on Jeremy's square body. And uh, yeah, his big heavy front bumper was just flopping around in the wind. So definitely needed that stronger support. I wasn't planning on using this one on this, but we might as well, we got it. See, they just slide into the back of the rails 
and put some screws in it. Replaces the stock factory plastic ones. And yeah, now we can mount this in there. Once we attach this to here at whatever height we needed at. So, all right, going for maximum up. <laughs> um, I can't get it in with the body on, so we gotta keep pulling the body on and off, which is still not the easiest thing to do. Even after we trim that, we can do it that way. Now we gotta set how far out it is. All right, guys, I gotta run the town real quick. Um, got this moved out to the furthest out hole on this part, and we're on the lowest hole on this part, depending on a lot of things. <laughs> I definitely recommend getting the uh, metal mount for this, because that's a lot of stuff hanging out, and if you have the plastic mount, it'll flex and give and bend. So, put this thing back on and see how, how we did. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, made this a little easier. Kind of found the trick getting this on now is to get the back sides up in first. Check our front and just kind of do one side at a time. <clears throat> Again, in the other video, I did the grub screws. Um, it's working pretty good. I, I just a little leery because the doors on these are opening. So you don't want to pry it out too, too much down there around the bottom edge of the door. I'm talking about that little part right there because that's pretty much all it's holding the body on. See, when I pull that out, the door opens. Definitely don't want to mess up our door hinges. So if you're a patient person, you might leave the uh, screws in there. All right, guys. Got that on. Pretty happy with the uh, position of it. I think I'm still waiting on the shock. So the next step, I'm going to go ahead and put stainless steel scale bolts over all of the chassis I can. Um, everywhere I possibly can. All right, guys. I got some of the hardware changed. I can't change all of it because a lot of it holds the rear uh, inner fenders on. And uh, you can see those go right through that hole. So left one on each side there. The front's kind of the same story. Uh, I ran out of long enough bolts already. I was getting to the transfer case, and I don't have any long enough for that. So we gotta wait for that hardware to come in. So let's fast forward time to get our parts. All right, guys. Act two of this video, I guess we'll call it. Parts came in. I am gonna backtrack a little bit. Um, I've been reading all the comments, and uh, you guys pointed out it's kind of counterintuitive to put that uh, Bauhaus skid plate on there and raise it up when we're doing the opposite with the axles. And it does make sense, and I'm sitting here about eye level with my blue Scottsdale, looking at that hanging down underneath that, so I think that's a better candidate for that uh, transfer case mount. So I'm going to start by taking that off, putting the stock one back on. Um, it will help. I don't have any other drive shafts that'll work, and that front one is popping out, so we definitely can't run it like it is. Um, one thing, it's after it's set for a little bit, we are getting even more sag in the rear. I don't, I'm not throwing any more blocks on there, so we're gonna have to uh, piddle with that a little bit more. I've got an idea, and I'll talk more about it when we get there, but the old bruiser shackles are longer, and that may give us a little bit more lift. We're trying not to move the axle further forward, so we may have to switch back to straight cut blocks since we're going to be tilting the axle down anyway. And we don't, we're not that worried about the pinion angle now since we're going to move the transfer case back down as well. So let me talk about what we've got here. I'm going to do all that stuff off camera. I don't want to waste your time seeing what I've done already. Um, we've got the Superlift dual front shock mounts for the Trailfinder 2. I did not even remember they had these for the rear as well. I did not get those. We'll see how this works. Um, we definitely didn't for the front. There's just no way to mount the shocks up how they need to be. I've got another set of 90s for the front, the super lift, just the plain white shocks. I've got two sets of 80s for the back. I'm hoping they're not too long. I don't know. Again, we're going to be playing with that rear suspension. And I got two sets of the yellow shock boots because we've already got yellow smiley face lights. We need to just keep with the theme. I don't think I'm going to put the stickers on these shocks. I might have some Rancho stickers, but Ranchos were red. I don't want to mix things up like that just for just for the sake of color. So I'm going to get the body off, get that transfer case stuff swapped back out, and then we'll start looking at the suspension. All right, guys. Got some complications, of course. Um, the front shock hoops, one, are way taller than the other ones. And two, I had to pull the inner fender out. And three, it's hitting the scale engine bay. So 
I mean, you can see how far we're off here. It just needs to go up a quarter of an inch. I think I can trim it enough. It's just right on that edge where the top of the old shock hoop is molded into it. There's just a little bit more plastic hanging down. Um, once we get that situated, I think we can come back with the inner fenders and just trim the tops out and still have our nice looking wheel well. Um, I got all these shocks removed. I'm not 100% on the links. The ones I had on the front appear to be 80s. So I bought four 80s and two 90s, thinking the fronts were 90s. Mm-hmm, yep. And uh, we'll see how this goes. So I'm about to, uh, I was about to start on the rear looking for shackles and changing out the blocks, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and do these front uh, inner fender or engine bay mods real quick. And I'm just gonna trim that lip off. Let me see if I can get you in here and show you. All right, it's real hard to see um, behind the breather here. That's the hump for the stock shock hoop. And uh, yeah, if we were to do the Jalan two hoops like I'd usually do on Trailfinder twos, that would have to be cut out anyway. Honestly, probably a little bit more. So we just gotta remove some of this lip underneath there. All right, you can see it a lot better from underneath. Um, have a good pin to mark it with but basically this edge right here we're gonna try to take that off of both sides got to watch out there's not anything right there except the air cleaner I've put a brand new thin cut wheel on my Dremel and um, these are pretty handy for that I ought to be able to get in here without hitting anything else <laughs> fingers crossed I'm gonna start with one side this is the driver side where we've got the shock hoop already mounted and uh, just see how it goes and before I go ahead and do the other side as well. All right, got it cut pretty clean. Uh, Deburred the edges pretty good well uh i had to get into the battery a little bit on that one just as a precaution i probably took a little more than i needed but you know it's hard to measure that in the dark so let's go see how it does i went ahead and did both sides i said i wouldn't but i was here and it was going good so we just rocked with it. all right went ahead and put both shock hoops on i mean see how massive those are i don't know about this edge up here we'll see how it how it fits i looked inside it does actually look pretty good we didn't get too carried away so let's see what we've done. Get those rear inner fenders in place. All right, it's still not enough. The part it's hitting on is on the shock hoop itself. All right, so you see how these are just squares and this part is where the original shock hoop would be, but this edge is what's catching on our inner fenders, but the holes are at the bottom of it. So, I'm proposing a plan. I'd put this on the bench sander and just round those off as much as I can, make a little triangle edge where maybe it'll fit up into the body better. These are $80. <laughs> so, that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut up our $80 shock mounts after we've cut up our in engine bay. we got to make it work. So, <laughs> here goes nothing. <laughs> guys i think we did it and get you in there to see i've got the body mounted on and tight um, i left those just bare aluminum it's not going to rust it's just it looks kind of cool in the engine bay i'll show you there you can see them sticking up we got perfect amount of space you can see the hole on this side down below it i think it's going to work <laughs> crisis subverted um as far as the inner fenders go that i don't know how to make work it's these got a lot of material, that shock hoop thing. I think I'm gonna have to take pretty much all of this out of the middle of, oh, we got magnets, nice. <laughs> so 
So I don't know. I'm going to mess with the shocks before we tear up anything else just to make sure. And uh, I'm going to find some rear shackles now and move on to looking at the back and getting it up just a hair higher. All right, guys, more modification. So I've got these shackles. I think these come off like a generic leaf spring kit from Amazon. For some reason, they only have one hole big enough for these kind of screws. Um, that's just how they're designed. They're a little bit wider, but they're quite a bit taller, as you can see. And that's, I hope, going to give us the rest of the lift we need. I've got some other lift blocks. I'm going to take these angles out while I'm here because I'm already pretty certain we don't need that angled correction anymore. So I'm going to swap those out for some straight blocks and leave the two blocks, add these, and see how level it sits. Fingers crossed. But I've got to drill these out. I'm using a uh, 5 30 seconds. I've got one on here already, and that's going to give us... Quite a bit of lift. Yeah, we definitely don't need that angled block anymore. I think that's going to be the answer to our problem. So, All right, guys, this has been another long video. I hope uh, this doesn't turn out too long. You got it sitting pretty level. Um, you got to remember when you take the screws out, these double shock hoops bolt in a different location. And I just turned the wheel and the entire front subframe fell out with the servo. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll come back and put some scale hardware in that. guys this is tedious oh my goodness these little spacers and shims i ended up putting a two mil spacer at the front and a three at the back just because of the way it lined up with the axle uh, getting the boots all even taking the springs out uh couldn't find out these are all 90s those two of them that i had they were just compressed a little bit more so yeah it worked out they weren't hundreds or they're all hundreds i don't know i give up they all match that's all that matters um yeah I went ahead and swapped out some scale hardware, some more. Um, I used scale hardware up here, scale hardware for that. I swapped out all my steering links with scale hardware, and I did add a couple two mil spacers on the back link and this front connection just because we've moved everything down. And that rod back here was getting pretty close to the leaf spring, so gave it a little more room to work. So the front is done, other than the inner fender situation. Um, time to move on to the back. And this should be fairly straightforward. I can line this up with the camera. We've got a plethora of holes right here that are all pretty well straight above the axle. So it's pretty much going to be the same thing. Just remove the springs from the, the shocks, put the boots on. Um, it's going to be a pain in the butt because of these inner fenders. Um, I'm not taking any more stuff apart. I've had this whole truck apart already. So yeah, it is what it is. We'll get them mounted up. We're going to the bottom mount on the axle. I'm probably going to have to get some more spacers out because we are going to have to space the shock head away from the... Uh, chassis a little bit and uh yeah we'll figure this all out i'm running out of scale hardware that stuff shows up tomorrow so we'll see i'd like to not have to come back and mess with this one again for a little while <laughs> but we'll see how it turns out all right i'm halfway done with the back i wanted to show you i've got a three mil spacer at the back a two at the front um i would like to widen them out a little more but i don't have long enough screws right now so that's what we're using that way i could get the nylon on the lock nut. So now I'm gonna flip it over and find some holes where these line up and uh, run some more spacers and bolt them to the chassis and we should be wrapping this up. Um, I'll probably take one of these inner fenders off just so I can show you better because it's really hard to show it upside down. It's hard to do with these tires on and I'd rather take an inner fender off than take these tires off because those little screws on those center caps are tedious. <music>
guys, this has been a full day of work. This is this is crazy how much work it is. I thought it, lifting it would be easier than, than lowering it. Um, it's a little technical. It's a little frustrating for me because it's counterintuitive to what I usually do, but this thing looks cool. I, I think we've nailed the 80s look. Um, the dual shocks, it's still, like I, I did a 80s montage for Instagram. We still got about the same amount of flex we started with. Uh, those shocks need a little bit of breaking in. They uh, a little stiff, especially the rears. But I don't know what to do with this thing now. It just looks cool. Um, contemplating the front tube bumper. Um, maybe some old style Nerf bar looking steps. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the rear suspension geometry and everything works. Um, I had to do so much work to get those front shock hoops in. Um, it's crazy. That, I thought they would just bolt onto everything. But that's what I get for uh, thinking. Assuming things will be easy. But I'm digging it. This thing is just pure 80s vibes um thinking maybe changing the graphics getting some uh something yellow and purple or something <laughs> period correct i don't know but i'm glad we were able to maintain the inner fenders in the front i hate when something comes with a feature and you end up doing away with it as you customize it it's kind of it, yeah seems like a waste so I'm glad we got to hang on to that uh, i don't know what to do next so comment below let me know what you guys think we should do with it uh, we need some personalized plates Something 80s. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I've been looking. Uh, somebody in, on Facebook suggested a, 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 what do you call it, jet ski. Put a jet ski in the back. I could not find anything that was right. I found some like sit down ones that were kind of 80s style, but like one I had when I was a kid, I remember exactly the size of it. And it, I think it would fit, but it's a little big to be in the bed of a truck. It'd be one that would, you'd have to trailer. And as far as like stand up jet skis, there's not any good scale ones. Barbie ones look ridiculous. Um, and the rest of them look like toys. They don't look like a, a real one. So I don't know. I need maybe a full chromed out Banshee or something in the back. <laughs> I'm going to figure out something else to do with it. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I'm working on a price list. I had a couple people ask. We'll probably just do a little quick video about that. Because I've got to go back through receipts. I already threw packaging away for a lot of this stuff. This was not a cheap build, and it's probably not done. So, now you figure the price of the truck, plus, I mean, the bumper and the roll bar were 100 and some odd bucks. I spent 140 bucks on shocks. Those front shock hoops were 75, 80 with shipping. Uh, the shock boots, it's it adds up quick. Tires and wheels, tires and wheels were 160 bucks. <laughs> uh, a lot of money, but uh, we got the look we we're after. So, anyway, guys, get out there and do something fun with the hobby. Mix it up. Get out of your comfort zone from time to time. You know, I like to build the rusty trucks and the rat rods and things. So this was a nice change of pace. And learned a little bit more about the TF2 and what we can do with this platform. And, uh, yeah, be sure to check these trucks out. RC4WheelDrive.com they, they... I don't know if they're still pre-ordering right now or they're available. I'm not sure the timeline on that and when this is coming out. So check them out. Keep it scale. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.